Microsoft Build 2022 has just closed its virtual doors with a lot of new services and features. And this time around, a lot has been said also about DevOps. In this video, I'm going to recap and cover all the major announcements in the DevOps space that Microsoft made at Build 2022. Hey, welcome back to Carter Day, where we try and do DevOps just better. Special video today covering Build and special location as well, because as you can see, I'm not in my usual studio. I'm in my company's offices here in Hanoi, Vietnam. Anyway, let's start uh, not with an announcement actually, but with lack of thereof. And I'm talking about the greatest missing, the greatest absent of BL 2022, Azure DevOps. There were in fact a lot of announcements and new features and demos uh, focusing on GitHub, but no announcement, session, feature, or even image of Azure DevOps. I think this says quite clear and shows us quite clear what the future will look like for Azure DevOps. But if you want to know more about this, stay tuned because very soon I'll have a guest on this channel and we will talk just about that. Anyway, talking about stuff that actually were presented at Build, um, let's start with the first announcement and it's one of my favorite one because now Azure has officially a fully managed Nginx offering. Nginx for Azure, which is currently in preview, is a SaaS solution with advanced traffic management and monitoring. The tight Azure integration enables ease of use with a few clicks for provisioning and configuration through the Azure portal. The service offers advanced traffic management features such as JSON Web Token, JWT authentication, and active health checks, and built-in security integration like Azure Key Vault for SSL TLS certificate management. Nginx for Azure is offered in partnership between Microsoft and F5, and because of that, you can find it and provision it through the Azure Marketplace. But don't worry because you will get a unified build like in your normal Azure build. And if you have agreements like enterprise agreements, for example, with Microsoft, you can use that as well. And the great thing is that being an Azure service, you can manage all the aspects of it via the Azure portal, including making configuration changes that are then applied to the service directly and using config files that you may already have from previous deployments. And last but not least, they have developed a GitHub integration that allows you to version control your configuration in a GitHub repo and apply changes to that configuration via GitHub Actions. We will talk again about containers and announcement related to containers in a moment, but let me change page for a minute and talk about another feature that I really quite liked. I'm talking about the new Microsoft Dev Boxes and Azure deployment environments. Microsoft Dev Boxes, currently in private preview, is a new cloud service that provides developers with secure, ready-to-code developer workstations. This service basically makes it easy for developers to access the tools and resources they need without worrying about workstation configuration and maintenance. If it sounds like what GitHub Code Spaces does, it's because the two services basically have the same purpose, making developer life easier and also making managing dependencies way quicker and easier. DevBoxes, however, take the code spaces concept a step further because it supports all type of developments, including uh, web development, desktop development, and, and so forth. And also it runs on Windows 11, uh, whereas GitHub Code Spaces only run on Linux. And because of that, you can use it as code spaces directly from the browser, but you can also uh, RDP, use a remote desktop to connect to them and work like on a normal computer. Your dev teams can pre-configure dev boxes for specific projects and tasks, enabling devs to get started quickly with an environment that's ready to build and run their app in minutes. At the same time, Microsoft Dev Boxes ensures unified management, security, and compliance by leveraging Windows 365 to integrate dev boxes with Intune and Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And when you're ready to test your applications or run them against other services, um, Azure Deployment Environments, which is also in private preview, will make it easy for developer teams to quickly spin up app infrastructure with self-service of project-based infrastructure as code templates that minimize setup while maximizing security, compliance, and cost efficiency and enforcing best practices. This is pretty cool, right? But let's move to the next announcement and it's Azure Load Testing. A few years ago, Microsoft used to have their load testing solution and service inside Azure DevOps. Um, actually, at that time, it was still called Visual Studio Team Services. But that service has been deprecated since then and left Microsoft and Azure without a proper load testing solution. Well, until now. Azure Load Testing is a new service built for and in Azure that makes it really easy to generate huge load using Azure resources and identifying bottlenecks in your applications. 
It enables developers and testers to generate high-scale load and run simulations that reveal actionable insights into app performance, scalability, and capacity. The service can use existing Apache JMeter scripts, and you will get recommendations backed by metrics and analytics. Azure Load Testing also supports continuous integration and continuous delivery, CICD, to give continuous feedback. I'm really excited for this service and I cannot wait to test it out, so stay tuned because for sure I'll make a video about this. Before we move on to more container-related announcements, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. This will not only help other people discovering this video, but will also mean a lot to me. Thank you. All right, next up, the GA of Azure Container Apps. The service has been in preview for a while, but now is stable for production workloads. Azure Container Apps allows you to run your containerized app in a serverless manner, but still taking advantage of Kubernetes, Keta for even driven auto scaling, Dapper and Envoy. And all of this is fully managed by Microsoft, so you can focus on your application and services and forget about managing infrastructure. One of the cool features of this service is that you can scale down your pods all the way to zero and then automatically scale up if requests come in. And if all of this was not enough, during the event, Scott Garvey showed a demo in which, with a single command of the Azure CLI, he was able to have an application containerized, a container registry created in Azure, some GitHub Action workflows created and run to build the image of the application, and finally, have everything deployed to Azure in a brand new Azure container app. And if you're curious about how the application got containerized, this is thanks to a new announcement made at Build 2022, the preview of support for Draft v2. Draft is an open source project that streamlines Kubernetes development by taking a non-containerized application and generating the Docker file, Kubernetes manifest, Helm chart, customized configuration, and other artifacts associated with a containerized application. Draft can also create a GitHub Action workflow file to quickly build and deploy applications onto any Kubernetes cluster. With the public preview just announced, Draft is now integrated into AKS through the Azure CLI the Azure portal and VS Code via an, an extension. And as we've seen, it works also with Azure Container Apps. And still talking about containers and AKS, there is another interesting feature that has been just announced at Build 2022, the web app routing. I couldn't find much about this AKS add-on, and also the part of the video, the part of the session in which this announcement was made was pretty quick. But uh, what we know for sure from the official announcement is that web app routing helps you get your web applications up and running in AKS securely while removing the complexity of ingress controller, certificate, and DNS management. And that the service offers a managed ingress controller powered by Nginx that you can use without restrictions and integrates out of the box with open service mesh to secure intra-cluster communication. I'm really curious to see this in action, so let me know in the comment section below if you've already had experience with it or you tried it out. Next and final announcement that I'm going to cover today is another big one. Microsoft, in fact, announced a new fully managed Grafana service on Azure. As I've mentioned, Azure Managed Grafana is a fully managed service for analytics and monitoring solutions. And it's supported by Grafana Enterprise, which provides extensible data visualization. You can just provision your new Azure Managed Grafana and connect it to AKS. And with that, you can see all the metrics and data provided by Container Insights visualized in the familiar interface of Grafana. You can see information like requests per second, the resources that you're using for your pods, and all the different things you need to run your application successfully. And since Grafana is an open source product, it's available to you in Azure or wherever you want to run it. And yes, the dashboard you've just seen is automatically created when you provision your Grafana managed service and you connect it to AKS because the service is optimized for uh, native data ingestion in Azure using services like Azure Monitor or Data Explorer. These were for me the biggest and most important announcement around DevOps that Microsoft made at Build 2022. But of course, they announced a lot more things, features and services so I advise you to check the book of news that Microsoft published. You can find the link in the video description and you will learn everything that has been announced. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about all the services and features I covered. And if you have any other announcement that you think it's worth sharing with the community. Also check out this video over here in which I cover a new innovative solution to connect to your private resources on-prem and in the cloud without using a VPN. But that's it for me. 
Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Courier Dave.